This is Robert with Go Engineer Technical Support Department, and I'm here to give you another Quick Tips video. Today we're talking about preparing SolidWorks files to be printed for 3D printers, uh, and we're going to be saving them to an STL file format. Here I've made a simple uh, wallet clip, and I just drummed this up quickly, so I don't know if the dimensions are quite right, but we're going to show uh, some of the pitfalls that might come preparing it for printing. Now, uh, you probably want to print this in, kind of in an upward orientation, so that way the strength of the material, you're not going to get any uh, high shear stresses uh, on a layer here on, this, uh, on that edge. So you probably want to print it standing up. It also means you'll use less uh, support material. The big thing we want to talk about is units in STL files, though. Uh, I've run into this a lot myself, and it's easy to overcome, but it's best to just uh, do it right the first time. So we can see that I've modeled this part in inches. You can see in the corner it says IPS, that's inch pound seconds, that's the SOLIDWORKS units. If for some reason you wanted to change that, you can click on tools and then options, and you'll get this system options window. We go to the document properties tab, and we'll go to units. And then you can choose your units. However, STL files won't be reading those units. Let's save it to an STL. We're going to click on Save As. You can also click on File and then Save As. And we're going to change our type to STL. We're going to get an option screen. Click on Options to see the units that we're outputting as. This says Output as Millimeters. Now this setting is static. It is not dependent on the uh, the units you select for your part it is just dependent on what you set this to and it doesn't change unless you come here to change it if i had exported this as millimeters instead of my clip being two inches wide it would have been two millimeters wide so it would have been much too small so i'm going to change my output to inches click ok i save this to the desktop with the same name but now the stl file format i'm going to say yes it's going to take a minute all right, so now let's open that file. But we want to find it in STL format, so let's go to All Files. There we go. STLclip.stl. Click on Open. No. All right, now normally it comes in STL graphics, which means there's nothing you can work with. You have no way of telling if this is the right size or not. So I'm going to close this. Don't save. And we're going to do something different. Click on Open. There it is. Let's change the type to STL and we'll get an Options button. So there's two things we could get here. Number one, we can import as a graphics body, solid body, surface body. So if we don't want it to come out as an STL graphics, but actually something we can work with, we can import as a solid body. This only works with uh, parts that are under a certain limit of data points. And so if the file is too big, if it has too many features, it can't be imported as a solid body. You'll also notice that we've got units. So the import units are separate from the export units. So you must set this as well. So let's open it. No import diagnostics. And then we're gonna go to our evaluate tab and use the measure tool. I'm going to measure this face to this face, and we'll see it's two inches wide, which is what I modeled the part as in this feature. Double click, and you can see there it is, two inches. Just to show you uh, contrast that, let's go back to our STL part, and I'm going to close it. We'll open up our document again. We'll choose STL file. Change the type to STL so that we can see the Options button. And I'm just going to import it as um, millimeters, because that's what it said. Click OK. Open it. No diagnostics. Great. So it looks pretty good, right? But when we measure it, it's two millimeters wide. So you want to be really careful of the units. Otherwise, your print isn't going to come out right, and you're going to be wasting material. This has been Robert with Go Engineer Technical Support Department. Quick tips videos. Have a great day.